Hello and welcome to Vocabilities.com, aka Improve Your Voice. My name is Darren McStay and today I'm playing with the idea of a green screen. Now I've never used a green screen before, this is my first time. The thing is I'm not in my kitchen, which is my usual place to talk to you. I'm actually in a summer cottage in Finland now, so I'm by the lake and even though it's beautiful outside, I needed the kind of quiet of an indoor space. So I'm in the sauna house and I've actually uh, got this green screen up, which I you know, bought a while ago, but I've never used yet. So I'm gonna test it out and see what backgrounds I could put on there. So if it gets a bit funky, don't worry, it's just me testing it out. Hopefully it works and you can hear me, which is more important. Today I've got a video of a voice review which I'm going to share with you on a rapper from England whose name is Akala. And I was asked to do this voice by an actor from Australia called Shane Fox who said he's a really big fan and can I cover Akala? So here it is Shane. Thank you very much for the recommendation. Big shout out to you. Now one of the first things that strikes me uh, with Akala, if, you know, for me personally, as being from London myself, is his accent. Now I believe he's from kind of centre north, slightly east London. I'm from east east London and I can hear similarities in that. I can hear similarities in his voice as I can in areas Hackney, Stratford and out to Essex where I'm from but that doesn't really matter to most of you watching this because you might not be from there. But that gives me a bit of an understanding as to what he's doing with his mouth and the similar things that I do which he does. However, there are different influences that affect each and every one of us, and so everyone's unique according to their own upbringing. Akala speaks a lot about human rights, civil rights, and inequality, and the racial divide that happen in England and all over the world. He's very knowledgeable, and he, he knows his history, and he knows his stuff. So if you've got any opportunity to watch any of his uh, talks online, not only just go and check out his music, then do it, because he's, he's really insightful, and you can learn a lot from the studies that he's made and the talks that he gives. But we're here to talk about his voice. And one of the things that I find quite interesting about Akala is this subtle texture in his voice. We also find many, many examples of this. This is an astronomical observatory. In this case, arguably the oldest astronomical observatory in the history of humanity. He's got this uh, kind of smooth, rough surface, almost like a cat's tongue. It's kind of, it's, um, it's got this little grain to it, but it's very delicate. And I mean, you might, you might miss it, but I can hear it. Because he speaks with this all the time, and he's a rapper, and he's a very clear, very articulate, very fast rapper, he also carries that texture through it, and it doesn't really seem to change. And because of its consistency, and it, the kind of the delicate use of it, I say use of it, but I think that it's not actual, as I say with other people, sometimes it could be a physical restraint or an issue there. I think it's actually a physiological thing. I think it's actually his tissue could have been damaged as a child. There was often a thing where kids who were born early that might have been put on incubators had a pipe put down their throat and this kind of damaged some of the lining and therefore caused this kind of texture to occur. I'm not sure if that happened to him. However, it's a possibility that maybe something um, maybe he was just born like that or maybe there was something happened at a young age that has helped his voice to develop with such a kind of texture to it. I could be wrong, but that's what I hear and because it's so consistent, I don't think it's something he can really change. I think it's with him all the time because sometimes when he's speaking, uh, the beginning of the speech when he's really resonant and full voiced, it's still there and when his voice is tired, if you hear him at different times or when he's rapping, it's always there and because it's consistent, that's why I think it's uh, an actual physical part of him, it's just the way he's made up. But I would like to know a bit more detail on that, so if, Akala, if you're watching this, let us know, I'd love to know kind of what you think about your own voice. It's funny how Akala reminds me in a couple of ways of uh, the comedian Russell Brand. Maybe because they're both quite slim or maybe because they've both got kind of high cheekbones. I'm not sure what that is, but there's something about the way that he conducts himself and the way that he can continue to speak quite eloquently um, and not seem to worry about his breath and it doesn't seem to ever be an issue. He always seems to have enough air no matter what he's going to say. Now, whether he's prepared for it or not, he clearly has. He's clearly done some work on his voice because it's always there. His instrument works for him perfectly fine. And if you hear any of his rapping, you'd know that, wow, that's quite hard stuff to do. So he's definitely built up a breathing system that functions well for him and it's developed well for him also as a speaker. And so you can hear when he's running out of breath, but he still manages to make it to the end every time. We subtly reinforced the idea, which was argued by serious historians at one point, that Africa has no history. And also when he is in this flow and, and he's able to keep speaking and, and 
turn these thoughts into words so eloquently and keep moving through them, he gesticulates a lot. He moves his hands an awful lot. He moves actually quite a bit, his whole body. He's very free and he's very natural with the way he uh, uh, releases his movements and the way that the words come out. And I think one affects the other. I actually believe that if you had to hold him still and said, stop moving, it would mess him up. I believe that he wouldn't be able to speak as well and as clearly and as fluidly as he does if he had to stand still. <laughs> Maybe that's a test for him. And I'm also very similar. You can't always see it because my hands are generally down here, but I do a lot of movement uh, with my hands. I, I generally, I've been told this before as well and I didn't even realize I had done that. But he does it and not only does he do move his hands a lot and his body a lot to help accentuate and express the words that are coming out of his mouth, he also does it symmetrically. He does this with his hands. He moves them together at the same time and he brings them forward and round and he kind of, matches and mirrors one hand to the other in some way. Where some people could be one-sided, some people could be the other side, some people keep their hands up, some people have their hands down below. If you imagine there's a table in front of you, you call it above the table and below the table. His is kind of above the table and in front of him and symmetrical, which is quite interesting because that's just the way he visualizes and the way he expresses the message that he's trying to portray. Take a look at this little clip where he's talking here in the history of the African continent and then its descendants. So I'm going to try and share, in half an hour, uh, tens of thousands of years of history with you very quickly, some of the snapshots of what we should be teaching. I'm going to try and share, in half an hour, see he's sharing, he's giving, he's offering it up, and he's saying half an hour like, that's the length of it. So I'm going to try and share, in half an hour, so yeah, he's, I think he's quite a visual person. And why has this got to do with his voice? Well, it's not necessarily, but if that allows him the freedom to continue speaking clearly and on a topic, then great, good for him. I know there's some schools of thought out there that want you to stand still. And they're thinking that gesticulation and over-articulating your arms is off-putting and irritating. But I don't think it is with someone like Akala because it's part of his speaking, it's part of his voice. And so your voice isn't just the sound that comes out of your mouth. And he's a good example of why and how movement is fine and it's okay. And he's using it as a tool to help express himself and we, the listener, because he's talking about such interesting detail, don't mind, it doesn't bother us. Okay, so a big element uh, that I feel like sharing about Akala's voice is his accent. Because be, even though we're from not too far apart uh, places and I'm sure we've enjoyed very similar cultures where we grew up, his accent is very strong. And although he's incredibly articulate, there are certain sounds that he makes that I'd like to address. One of them is the F sound where it should be a TH. Thousands rather than thousands. And it's a bit of a London thing saying thousands, but listen to this. Tens of thousands of years of history of thousands. So he does that quite often with the TH sounds at the beginning of words and makes the F sound instead. Also, when there is a word that's got a double L at the end of like a ball, hall, mall, he's like, he, he has the W instead. And this is something else that I've done myself in the past, ball. So it sounds like a W at the end, uh, tall, ball, hall. Do you hear that? So rather than tall or ball, it's like ball. Tall. Because if we're not careful, because if we're not careful, so rather than saying careful, he says careful. And that's, again, something that I do. But for me, the most interesting part of Akala's accent is his vowel sounds, especially the U, A, and I sounds. He's A, he's, when he's pronouncing in a word where it's R, he comes out A. Ah. Almost like in, in Finnish, they have two uh, letters for A. A, which is R, regular, and then A, ah, which is a with dots, and he pronounces his R like an A. Ah. And the way he does that is it's more front of the mouth and it's very high up. He's lifting his soft palate up at the back and creating a, a kind of, like a, a longer, taller space in his mouth to create that sound. Ah, ah. If I was to say the word alive, he'd say alive. I'm fairly sure if he was alive today. Do you hear that? Alive. He's just lifting, making that space and sending the air up to the top of his mouth and we do exactly what it was not supposed to be intended to do. And we do exactly, exactly, ah, 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 ooh, really sending that up to the top of his mouth and creating that space. So he's creating like a length in his mouth that way. Actually, Dizzy Rascal's accent is banging in the center of where I'm from and where Akala grew up. And his accent is like, is like Dizzy Rascal. And the best way to produce Dizzy Rascal's voice is to say Dizzy Rascal, Dizzy Rascal. 
So you've got that ah sound and the ooh at the end. And Akala has a lot of that in some of the sounds that he makes. So the quick review of Akala is he uses gesticulation to allow movement in his body and to allow thoughts to flow and because he visualizes the way he wants to say things. And he keeps it symmetrical because that's what makes him feel comfortable in doing that. And because he feels comfortable, he's able to speak eloquently and fluidly for long periods of time without losing track of his thought. Also, there's a vocal husk, which I actually think is not due to restriction. I actually think it's down to some damage from a younger part of his life or that he was just born and that's his physiology. That's just the way he's made up. His A, U and I sounds are very high in the mouth, creating that alive sound. He's most likely to say F rather than TH and he'd use a W instead of a double L at the end of, of words with L at the end. So that is my brief review of Akala's voice. My name is Darren McStay. This is Vocability dot com aka improve your voice and until the next time i hope the screen screen worked look after your voice <laughs>